Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have a great show for you today. Robbie, what do we have and where are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm hosting remotely from sunny or not so sunny California, but I'm really excited because I'm going to be in person with Kim tomorrow. So that should be yeah. fun. Uh, <laughs> We're going to try to squeeze meeting you here. You. <laughs> in, invest, investigating the California education system on the ground. Yes. That's right. And, and checking out uh, Rising West, our, uh, our uh, L.A. headquarters. But, yeah. uh, but right now, uh, to, for today's show, we have Batya Ungar Sargan joining us uh, to talk about misinformation and the media's role in the rise of COVID fatalities in Trump counties. Also, Namiki Const and Philip Wegman join us on the panel to discuss the U.S. Space Force's warning about China's growing influence in the skies. Now, speaking of U.S.-Chinese relations, just weeks after talks aimed at ease, easing tense relations between the two global superpowers, the Biden White House announced Monday that it will impose a diplomatic boycott of the Beijing Olympics. This means the U.S. government officials will not attend the 2022 Winter Games, citing China's human rights atrocities, but athletes are still going to be able to compete. So here's what White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki had to say on the matter. Not sending a U.S. delegation sends a clear message that we cannot conduct ourselves with business as usual, that we are not in a state where business as usual is appropriate at a time where there are human rights abuses that we have been outspoken about, that we have taken actions on, and we feel this sends a clear message. At the same time, uh, we believe U.S. athletes, people who have been training, uh, giving up uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, preparing for these Olympics, should be able to go and compete, and we look forward to cheering for them from home. This week, the House is expected to vote on legislation that would prohibit certain imports from China's Xinjiang region, where the country's government is accused of holding Uyghur Muslims in forced labor camps. The Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act would also authorize sanctions on entities and individuals facilitating the forced labor of Uyghurs and other Muslim minority groups in Xinjiang. Meanwhile, China has threatened the Biden administration with retaliation over its decision. Ministry spokesperson Zhou Lijian said that a new conference Tuesday, quote, out of ideological bias and based on lies and rumors, the U.S. is trying to disrupt the Beijing Winter Olympics. This will only expose its sinister intention and further erode its moral authority and credibility. Beijing-based journalist Dake uh, Kane reported in the Associated Press in October that Chinese authorities have scaled back many of the aspects of Xinjiang's high-tech police state and the panic that gripped the region a few years ago has subsided considerably. This is four years after Beijing reportedly launched a brutal crackdown that swept up a million or more Uyghurs and other mostly Muslim minorities into detention camps and prisons. So I find this particularly interesting because only two months ago, AP said, everything looks pretty normal here. You know, teenage boys are flirting with teenage girls. People are listening to music, drinking alcohol. Women are doing hairstyles. These are things they were not able to do previously under uh, more fundamentalist or extreme Islam that had kind of seeped into the Uyghur region. So if this is gone, then what are we doing? You know, why are we why are we then saying, oh, well, we're going to uh, still sanction you or or ban you or boycott you if the AP is reporting they were on the ground, they saw it and it's just not there. Well, the AP didn't report that it was fundamentalist Islam that had made it less likely to see teen boys uh, you know, out, out of doors, uh, they were saying that it was the fact that they were locked up in, in these camps. Uh, it, it's been interesting to see the way that people have responded to this, this AP article that begins by talking about how the concertina wire that wants to find the entire landscape of, of Xinjiang, you know, has mostly been taken down. I don't quite understand how that has been this ringing kind of endorsement of the CCP's policy there. I mean, I'm glad that they took a lot of the con concertina wire down, mm -hmm. but isn't that an acknowledgement that the entire landscape was defined by concertina wire for several years? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely think that there was a big crackdown that was going on for sure. I mean, the war in Syria had, wind, had uh, been winding down, and a lot of these fighters that were recruited into these more radical areas of Islam, into ISIS and al-Qaeda, uh, the Uyghurs were, unfortunately, a very fertile breeding ground for this. They were recruited. They fought. They had to come back because the wars were ending. And China, we don't have this problem in the United States, thank God. But China had to deal with thousands and thousands of fighters coming back, and they didn't know what to do with these very radical uh, types of people. 
and they had to, you know, so they did detain them. They definitely did put them in prisons and they put their family members and anyone who agreed with them in as well. So people that didn't go off to fight were also put into these. I definitely think that was going on there. But, you know, look, what we have is we have 22 Western nations that have condemned China saying what you're doing are human rights abuses, genocide, maybe not genocide, okay, cultural genocide, whatever you want to call it. And 37 other countries that have come out saying we don't agree. Most of those majority, uh, many of them majority Muslim countries saying we don't agree. So, you know, a lot of this, I wonder, is just a narrative, a distraction. My biggest beef with this we have a lot of bones we could pick with China. The biggest ones being censorship, surveillance state, social credit systems. But why does our government not go after those things and talk to China ab about those issues? My fear is the reason they don't want to is because they want to implement those things on us potentially. They say, well, you know, yeah. we don't really want to criticize them over possible control tactics that we might want to use on our own population. And so let's well, go after I them for other things. I always find that right hilarious when they're when they're uh, when they halt tech. CEOs before Congress and they start yelling them, you know, why do you kowtow to Chinese censors? We want you to kowtow to us. You know, how dare you, you know, take down content that they request you take down. We want to tell you how to run your companies. Uh, so that's always hilarious. I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but, but the, I mean, the issue with like sanctions and tariffs and okay, we can't export any of their or import any of the goods from that region. Like I al we always go to those policies because we don't know what else to do. But like, what what good do those policies actually end up serving? Is is what I never quite understand. Like, that's I know it, it, they're not going to like reverse well, this, course because of that. They never do. You you might you may, you may be right. This, this particular bill says that the cus, customs needs to certify uh, that the product was not produced as a result of forced labor. Now, you know how they go about inspecting that and 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 figuring that out. You know, leads to all sorts of of graft and and questions. But I guess. I guess the part that I don't understand about how this is this is understood here in the U.S. is that the the hyper surveillance, uh, the hyper censorship, the the kind of tech control of a population, and and the reordering of an entire cult culture being done through this surveillance and and this this network of prisons uh, is is like a a hyper version of the thing. That we say that we're concerned about here in the United States. So, so the same people in the United States who are constantly decrying the, the war on terror, the global war on terror, the domestic war on terror, uh, worried about uh, civil liberties, say say that well, you know, in in Western China, that you know there were you know uh, radical Islamist militants, and so therefore that's di that's different. So, is the is the only question that we care about? whether or not there can be some fig leaf of a justification for a tyrannical crackdown. What, right. wh like, what's the difference? Like, why is it okay there? Because there were, you know, militant, right. you know, Islamic radicals who came from Syria or came from Afghanistan or yeah. came from Kazakhstan. Why is that okay? But it's a problem here. I don't know if people say it's here. okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't know if anybody's saying it's OK what, what's going on there. I mean, it's definitely a problem we luckily do not have to face. We don't have floods of ISIS fighters coming back needing to repatriate onto our home soil. And then what the heck do we do with them? We don't have that problem here. So it's easy to criticize how another country handles that. Um, but I, I don't you know, I don't know if anybody says it's OK. I think people are just saying it's not necessarily what you know, what the Western media and the Western narrative makes it out to be, what our CAA talking points are. But I do think that what we need to ask about this in particular is, you know, the Olympics are supposed to be this time where you drop all of that. It's not supposed to be political. And so this should be the one time I feel like countries that disagree, countries that are even at war, are supposed to come together, should come together and say, we're dropping it for now. We're here for the Olympics. We're here for our athletes. This is a wonderful competition that has nothing to do with politics. Like, why can't we just do that? Didn't we go? I, I, we've gone to a lot of Olympics during a lot of times when there was a lot of crap going on around the world. Like, why can't we do that this time, too? Why do we have to boycott them just to further inflame a Cold War? Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it seems like what good does it again what good does it accomplish maybe it, it like it's a brief moment of we feel good we stood up to them we said something but you didn't really do anything and i don't know what can right. be done like we don't want to go to war with china I, we absolutely don't want a military confrontation uh, but we don't like what they're doing but because we do, we quite quite reasonably don't want to have a military confrontation our our ability to constrain them is just is not really is not really there 
So I don't. Right. So this is like another empty kind of empty diplomatic. I mean, it sounds like it made them very upset. They really want their precious Olympics. <laughs> That's I'm not true. a big fan of the Olympics personally. I don't <laughs> enjoy the Olympics. I don't watch them. I don't like either sports or nationalism generally. So it's not, it's, 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 uh, oh no, we're not going to the Olympics. Who cares? Is kind of right. my I mean, response, you're right that on, on the one hand, it's an expression of weakness. On the other hand, they got so upset that, that maybe it, it, maybe it did matter a little bit. And, and to be clear, I do think it's important for people to understand that the State Department here, the United States State Department, is not a, is not a credible actor in this in this space. It is not somebody with clean hands. Like they, you know, they they have a record of working to destabilize Western China in order to undermine their global adversary. Like that that is a fact. But we can acknowledge that fact while also saying that the that the CCP reaction in, in the region. Is not something that we should we should to, uh, that, that we that we should tolerate kind of ethically and morally as as a way that we want a just society to be organized. I think that's the point we could probably all agree on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, stick around. We'll have more rising right after this.